home prices in 2025 are a couple percent above where they were last year at this time. People often ask how can it be possible that home prices are still climbing, even though the cost of money is so much higher and there are obviously fewer buyers who can afford these prices? One reason is that home prices that home prices have stayed elevated is that nationally, inventory is still pretty restricted. So on the supply-demand equation, demand is way down, but supply is surprisingly low too in much of the country. If there are too few homes for sale, they don't have to be affordable to everyone. They only have to be affordable to a few people. But if current trends continue, the inventory shortage will be effectively gone by next spring. Does that mean home prices will fall? It might. In fact, while home prices are higher than a year ago, as inventory has increased, the rate of appreciation has decreased. As more supply becomes available, these homes have to be affordable to more people. So I've called this compression in home prices. Home prices are just 2% above last year at this time. The 50-year average for annual home price appreciation in the U.S. is more like 5% a year. So this year is 2%. Uh, When inventory finally builds back to the old normal levels, that 2% may go to zero or even negative. So that's if the current trends continue. Mortgage rates are a big variable here. In 2024, we saw a notable increase in buyer demand when mortgage rates got close to 6%. At that time in the fourth quarter, home sales picked up and home prices did too. So 6% is a threshold that I'm watching again this year. If we spend any amount of the year at or near 6%, I expect that inventory sales and price trends will actually reverse. So I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the president of Altos Research here at Housing Wire. So let's take a look at the data for the U.S. housing market as of late February 2025. The available inventory of unsold single-family homes on, on the market in the U.S. climbed this week by almost half a percent to just over 640,000. So there are 28.7% more homes on the market now than a year ago. So this is the supply expansion I was talking about. However, last year at this time was when mortgage rates were climbing to their highest level of the year. So mortgage rates are now lower than they were a year ago, believe it or not. As rates climbed in 2023, in 2024, in February, March, April, May, all the way up to 7.5%, inventory grew very quickly each week. So by the end of May last year, there were 38% more homes on the market than a year prior. This year, rates are slowly easing down. So the expansion of inventory will be capped a bit. So we're expecting 18% inventory growth by the end of the year. So if you joined us on our webinar last week, you learned that Texas and Florida, which had led inventory growth all year last year, are no longer the fastest growing states for unsold inventory. California and Arizona are. So California and Arizona have 45% more homes unsold on the market now than a year ago. Texas only has 31% more homes on the market. So that's a big shift in the trends from last year. This illustrates to me which areas of the country are more mortgage rate sensitive. Texas and Florida exploded in homes unsold when mortgage rates surged and are relatively less impacted now. California has had more of a steady increase in growth of the unsold homes. So if Texas and Florida are more sensitive to rates, you can imagine what happens later this year if rates fall or rise substantially. So in this chart, we're looking at 10 years of inventory across the country. At the far right end of the chart, you can see that inventory is starting to inch up for the spring. I've highlighted last year where there were only 500,000 single family homes on the market. I've also highlighted 2018 when there were 775,000 single family homes on the market in February. So assuming mortgage rates stay higher for the year, we will probably see that 2018 level again by next spring. So in the inventory chart, you can see three distinct phases. The left side of the chart is the last decade when mortgage rates were falling for most of the decade. 
Uh, the more rates fell, the more we want to own real estate. The more they fall, the more we want to own. As we own more, the available inventory of unsold homes decreases. So that's the first phase. During the pandemic, that dynamic gets supercharged and rates drop to ultra low levels. So we wanted to own every bit of real estate we could. So inventory hit record lows as we bought everything in sight. Now we've had three years of rising rates and three years of rising inventory. So it, it looks like after four years of these elevated mortgage rates, the market will finally be back to the normal levels of unsold homes on the market. That's next spring. And as we approach that threshold of old levels of unsold homes on the market, it raises these questions about home prices. So to get a lot of homes on the market, though, we need some sellers. There were only 54,000 new listings of single family homes unsold this week. That's not a ton. There were another 10,000 new listings, immediate sales. So which makes uh, 64,000 total home sellers in total. It was another week with fewer home sellers than last year. Uh, it's hard to grow inventory too much when there aren't that many sellers. Now, the unsold new listings, the unsold new listings is actually 4.8% more than a year ago. So demand is, is slower. So more of the sellers are sitting on the market. Uh, there are fewer immediate sales that go directly into contract. So in this chart, we're showing these unsold new listings each week. So it's a little more than 2024 or 2023. So I continue to interpret any growth in sellers as a good sign for a healthier housing market. As always with the new listings data, we are vigilant for any signal of a lot of sellers, some kind of flood that would quickly change the supply demand dynamic. So the current thing to keep an eye on is whether a lot of federal government chaos leads to greater unemployment or like financial distress for Americans. And does that lead to a change in the number of people who have to sell their house? So there are early signs that unemployment in the D.C. metro is climbing, for example. Are those people going to suddenly have to sell their ho homes? So there is a time lag between unemployment and inventory. Uh, despite the uh, social media hysteria, the D.C. housing market does not have any sign of a flood of sellers. Absolutely none. Uh, but here's what a timeline could look like. Let's say we have a massive spike in unemployment this spring 2025. As people lose their jobs, they scramble, they get unemployment insurance, they look for new work, but they don't typically rush to sell their house a week after they lost their job. If the economy has really tanked and you've been out of work for months and future employment looks dubious, then you start to make financial arrangements. Once you've been out of work for like six months or more, and this is when mortgage payments start being missed. And this is when you start working with the bank. After several months of that process, that's when distressed sales begin. So when you add it all together, it really implies that if major unemployment hits like right now, that would be 2026 inventory growth. And so while unemployment is on the rise, it's still pretty low. Like um, Americans have jobs right now. So the economy, employment, home sales cycle this time around has an added wrinkle, which is that homeowners all have ultra low mortgage rates. So selling their home might actually put them in a worse cash flow position. So in a normal recession cycle, homeowners could swap a high mortgage payment for a lower rent payment and help correct their cash flow. But that's mostly not true now. So it could be that even if the great the, the crazy policy changes trigger like a big job loss recession now, that it could be that housing inventory gains are much more limited than you'd expect. So that's what to watch for in the new listings. We are approaching the total inventory levels where home prices might have to adjust down. If there are, is there any sign of a flood of sellers that would accelerate those inventory gains? As of right now, there is not, but as always, we stay vigilant to measure every week to see if it might be happening. Meanwhile, uh, with the greater supply of unsold homes, home prices are just barely positive from last year. Home prices are about 2% higher now than in February 2023. Uh, this week, the median price of the new contracts that came in uh, came in at, at 
$385,000. So that was down a smidge from last week and is 2.6% greater than the same week a year ago. Home prices are compressing. So nationally, it is not accurate to say that home prices are falling. They're higher than they were last year nationally, but the growth rate is down. So home prices in 2024 rose 4% over the year prior. Now it's only 2%. Uh, there have been recent times when home prices did indeed fall. It happened in 2022, and you can see it in this chart here. Uh, at the left end of the chart is the purple line for 2025. We measured $385,000, the median price for this week's home sales contracts. Uh, home prices generally climb for the spring season to peak in June before sliding down in the back half of the year. In 2022, that's the green line here, we, there were notable moments when home prices dropped. Home prices adjusted down in June and again in September when, when mortgage rates spiked big. Uh, that is not happening now. So here in the spring of 2025, home prices are a little higher than a year ago, but just barely. Um, and that's why it looks like further increases in inventory seem to be required uh, before home prices turn negative nationally. As long as mortgage rates stay elevated, we should be on the watch for this pattern in home prices. If rates spike from here, for example, if inflation news comes in high and the yield on the 10-year treasury jumps, then maybe more mortgages hit like 7.5% again. If that happens, then I would expect to see home prices adjust down like you can see here in the 2022 line, the green line here. On the other hand, mortgage rates have actually been inching lower for about a month now. If we get lucky and rates continue to ease down closer to 6%, then that pattern might actually halt and home prices would likely have resilience like they did last fall. So you can see the impact home prices uh, on home prices in the blue line in, for 2024 here. Uh, after the brief September dip in mortgage rates last year, close to 6%, enough buyer demand was, was stimulated that home prices stayed elevated in the fourth quarter. Home 2024 had the opposite pattern from 22 at the end of the year. So you can see the blue line stayed elevated. So home prices inched down this week and home prices and home sales dipped for the week also. We counted 57,000 new contracts pending for single family homes, plus another 12,000 condo sales. That's 6% fewer than last week and 5% fewer home sales than the same week a year ago. Home sales will generally continue to climb for the spring. We should see a rebound of 60,000 or so in next week's data. Uh, what we're hoping for, though, what we've been hoping for, though, has not been materializing. So in this chart, we'd like to see the purple line for 2025 come in consistently above the blue line for 24. Growth in home sales would be a good sign for the market and the economy. But since that isn't happening, there are now 313,000 single family homes in contract across the country, uh, which is fractionally lower, fewer than a year ago, fewer home sales. So in the fourth quarter, home sales had built some growth, but that growth is now gone. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, mortgage rates have been easing lower for about a month and are below last year at this time. Rates are still near 7% though. So the bottom line on home sales is there isn't any sign of growth yet for 2025. We thought there would be coming off the fourth quarter, and I continue to believe that home buying demand will happen faster than supply if we see rates start to approach 6% again. Meanwhile, the leading indicators for future sales prices also continue to confirm this pattern I've been describing. So the percent of homes on the market with price reductions ticked up again this week by 20 basis points to 33.2%. So there are more homes on the market now than, that have taken a price cut from the originalist price than in any recent February. And that's a very clear statement about home buyer demand versus available supply in early 2025. I've been talking about this data point for several weeks now, and the trend continues here into late February. So in most years in February, you get fresh new supply, you get the initial spring buyer demand, and as a result, in many years, Q1, there are usually fewer price cuts each week. This year, there are more price cuts each week. Uh, in the chart, you can see the purple line for 2025. 
Uh, price cuts are more common now than in previous years. Uh, price cuts increased for the week. Uh, this, uh, the most obvious contrast here is with the green line from 2023, where the market was finding surprising strength. In 2023, the price cuts improved all the way to the end of April. So this year was January when sellers started cutting their prices more. Uh, price cuts are measuring the homes on the market now, where sellers see weak demand. A price cut today hopefully generates an offer in March for a sale that closes in April. And the price cuts data tells me that we have weak home sales pricing for several more months at least. If mortgage rates do not cooperate and are still around 7% or higher by the end of the spring, that's going to show up in the price cuts data. It's, it'll show up in the inventory data and it'll give us visibility on the possibility of home prices declining for the calendar year of 2025. So stay tuned for that. Okay, that's all the data we have time for today. If you need to communicate uh, with your buyers and sellers about this housing market, you should join us at Altos Research. Go to altosresearch.com. You can now sign up for free Altos account to get your local data. We'll help you dive into the local market and start helping people understand the market today. So go check that out. There's a link in the description below. See you next week.